Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Simon Volt. I'm the Director of Sales here with V-Technologies. Joining me today is Chris Sletner, a sales professional for the McCola Interface. Uh, we are going to be taking you through a demonstration of Starship with McCola. Um, and for those of you using ShipGear, this is going to kind of compare both of our platforms, uh, show you the main differences between the two, uh, and how we integrate with McCola. So before I turn it over to Chris, just a couple housekeeping. If you do have any questions, we'll save those to the end. Um, raise your hand and we can answer those um, at the end of the demonstration. And uh, everyone will be on mute. So the questions, again, will be all kept to the very end of the presentation. So without further ado, Chris, if you want to take it away, the floor is yours. Great. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today to take a look at Starship. So we'll go ahead and take you through a brief PowerPoint here, talk about some of the differences between the two different solutions, why you may want to consider switching, and then we'll jump into a demo at the tail end of the process. So really, what is the difference between ShipGear and Starship? Uh, the ShipGear solution that you may be familiar with now uh, is basically geared towards those shippers that uh, uh, have an individual carrier, so you're shipping with just UPS or just FedEx. It supports uh, parcel services only, so no LTL. Um, there's no item integration with Macola, so you're primarily dealing with the order header information, the address, your reference fields, but you don't get down to the product level. Uh, there's really no integration with other third-party applications, so if there's other systems that you want to integrate uh, into the workflow with McCola and the shippers, uh, that's not really an option for ShipGear. Uh, there's no rate shopping because you're in the separate applications, so you have uh, UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager in order to open up the transaction, and it's a single transaction interface. There's no batch processing options. Uh, we we're able to select a range of transactions and run them through all together. Uh, Starship has its own user interface, so it takes the place of the carrier software. Uh, it's a multi-carrier, multi-mode solution, so you have the ability to do uh, both parcel and freight shipments. Uh, those can be LTL. Uh, we can do uh, multi-stop uh, master bills of lading for your, your truckload type shipments and also uh, export documentation. There's line item integration available with the McCola inter inter interfaces. So we have the ability to consume all the McCola product information and uh, plug in uh, all the commodity level data that uh, you may need to populate on paperwork. Uh, this is useful for doing international shipments where we can pull a Schedule B code, uh, what types of paperwork need to go with that, country of origin, if you have to file with ACE. Uh, Starship also has uh, integration with EDI solutions, so you can generate your 128 labels within Starship for your trading partners, assign the um, serialized container IDs, and kind of move that process from your EDI solution or the trading partners portal into the shipping process, make it a little more efficient. There's integration with uh, WMS software from McCola. Uh, you also have the ability to you know, pack out on handhelds and then push that packed container data from the WMS directly into Starship. Uh, rate shopping can be done between all the various carriers that we support. Batch processing where you can select a range of transactions and have them processed together. We also offer e-commerce extensions to many popular um, marketplaces and shopping carts and that list is growing all the time. Some of the uh, added value reasons to switch over to Starship, there's 20 different LTL options, and uh, we're also growing that list over time. Um, that has access to direct carriers. There's also 3PL rates there from FreightQuote, and we're working on adding some additional third-party logistics company support in upcoming releases. You have access to discounted USPS rates, and uh, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, Starship has USPS as a standard carrier now bundled with it. You get that out of the box. Uh, with uh, McCola, there's a more robust ERP integration options uh, with the item level detail. There's also the hooks into the other various platforms. And Starship also has a SQL extension, which opens up other tables within McCola to retrieve data from and write results back to. 
that also opens up other uh, platforms, uh, shopping carts, CRM, service databases, wherever you need to see the shipping information. We offer enhanced tools to promote your brand so you can have um, email notifications go out to, to, targeted to specific types of customers or, or promos with um, your logo and your color scheme links back into your cart and your website. And if you have different brands that you uh, that you ship under different entities, uh, if you're doing you know blind shipments or you have multiple product lines, uh, you can have different types of templates set up based on who it is that you're shipping to and who you're shipping from. Uh, with Starship, you have a dashboard, so that offers some reporting and analytics to gain some additional insight into your shipping activity. You can see if you're leaving some money on the table. Uh, there's automated uh, carrier rate shopping and service selection through ship via rules. If you want to take the decision out of the hands of the operator, you can set up Starship to go ahead and make that decision for you and enforce your business rules based on how you want to get the product there, uh, most cost effective and the fastest method. Uh, I mentioned the EDI and WMS integration, so you have a more uh, robust integration into your overall operation with the ability to kind of pack out outside of the Starship user interface and uh, multiple touch points. Uh, centralized deployment uh, for support with uh, hosted environments using remote desktop or Citrix, uh, where you can have Starship live in a data center or you can have one instance of the software on the server and share it out to all of your users, whether they be in-house in the single facility or you have multiple warehouses that need to remotely access the software. And again, the item support to streamline those uh, types of commodity intensive type shipments, international freight and hazmat. Just a quick look at some of the various carriers that are available as modules on the Starship system. You can see we have all the major parcel carriers as well as um, all the uh, LTL or common carriers that are available in the United States. Uh, the rate shopping, you also have a uh, browser-based rate shop uh, utility. You get this with the license and this opens up the rate shopping to users in your front office where you're able to do a cost comparison at the point that you're taking the order. Uh, getting into the post office with Starship, you'll notice here a screenshot of the UPS bill, and you'll see the column here circled in red. There's quite a few um, markups in the accessorials or the surcharges that are being added to your carrier bills all the time. Pretty significant um, numbers there that kind of speak for themselves. Where Starship can help you with the post office is to try to target certain types of shipments that are falling into these categories and eliminate some of those extra fees that you're paying on the bill. Uh, in the next slide here, you'll see where UPS and FedEx have the various uh, delivery area surcharges based on the residential, rural areas, uh, the fuel surcharge, address correction fees, uh, dimensional weight, uh, where you're paying for the amount of cubic space that your packages are taking up in the truck versus the actual weight. Um, your package, uh, tracking information and weights up to 16 ounces. Uh, so these are areas where the post office can you know, potentially be a viable option for you in those types of shipments to save you on all those extra fees and to route some of those shipments through the post office. Uh, in particular, the dimensional weight is where you'll see uh, some very uh, cost-effective options uh, where you're paying based on the size of the box, how much space it's going to take up on that truck, not the contents inside of the box. In this example here, we're shipping a teddy bear from the East Coast to the West Coast, and uh, the material inside that weighs about 20 ounces. You're being billed for two pounds, but based on the size of the box here, you can see FedEx is assessing the weight at six pounds for the build weight. UPS is assessing that at five pounds, whereas the post office just bills you for the two pounds of the actual box. And you can see the cost savings here. Uh, you could potentially save you know, over $8 on the shipment by routing it with the post office. Uh, in the latest 1803 release, uh, you have the ability to view the post office rates even if you don't have that module enabled. If you're an older user and you're just using UPS or FedEx, uh, the latest release will give you the ability to see that if 
you're switching over from ship gear, then you'll have the post office available as a standard carrier out of the box. A little bit on the email notification. Uh, you can set up the branding here with your own logo, uh, the color scheme, however you want to format those. This will reduce the number of inbound calls that you're receiving with inquiries from your customer as to the status of the shipment. Uh, we can include any kind of the reference fields that you want out of McCola, such as the PO number, uh, the order ID, customer ID, any information that may be relevant to the customer. And you can also kind of build the brand awareness uh, by promoting you know, other products, by attaching catalogs, uh, literature, links back into your shopping cart and your website. We'll show you that as part of the demo. Uh, the dashboard is another tool that you have available with the Starship license. Uh, this gives the entire front office access to the shipping activity out in the warehouse without taking up a user license on your Starship uh, setup there. Uh, it gives you access to the shipment history, tracking information, uh, some analytics and reports on uh, all the activity, any of the uh, customers that you're shipping to. You can kind of zero in on what's going on out in the warehouse, even by user. It's browser-based, so it's not going to take up any seats on your license. Really, anybody in the organization can have access to this tool. Uh, for EDI, we'll help kind of uh, offload some of the labor-intensive process of having to manually go into the EDI solution and print out your 128 labels, assign the container IDs disembodied from the shipping process. This can be dovetailed neatly into the parcel or freight uh, shipping process where Starship will automatically assign those container IDs and print out the 128 labels for your trading partners. Those will come collated in the same sequence as your shipping labels and your packing list. So if you're working with a large shipment, you don't have to go back and try to marry up the appropriate uh, 128 label with the shipping label and the packing list. They'll all come out in the same series. Um, with the shipping process, you're going to have the ability to pack items into containers for those trading partners that require a pick pack type of ASN. You'll have the ability to define those um, items and quantities that are nested in, inside of each of your boxes and which of those are on pallets. And uh, Starship offers uh, integration and uh, support for a lot of the different Mokola um, EDI type solutions out there, Data Masons, SPS Commerce, BSI, uh, One EDI, and Gentran. And with that, we're going to you jump over to the product demo. Just switch screens here. Okay, so when working with Macola, typically you have the order number as a key field to retrieve the information by. Uh, if you are familiar with ship gear, you have the uh, pop up that comes uh, from the keyed import or the clear field screen in FedEx that uh, is, is not attached to the main shipping screen. It's just a a dialog box where you can enter or scan the order that you want to ship against from a cola. In Starship, that's tethered here to the left-hand side of the screen, and the cursor will always go back to that field, so it's always waiting for input for the next order. If you have um, barcodes, you can certainly scan those. You can enter the transaction here on the Starship screen or click on the spyglass, and that'll bring up a view of all the orders that you want to process. This is where you can make multiple selections. If you want to do the batch processing, you can also select all here. There are sorts available in this view, so you can narrow down the view um, based on what it is that you want to sort on. So any of these um, sort fields can be resequenced here or eliminated from the view. You also have filters, so you can drill down into a certain subset of data, maybe by a date range, a certain customer, certain PO number, by state, any number of ways to carve up that data. But in a typical workflow, you're really just you know, entering or scanning in the information into Starship. From there, we're going to go grab that transaction, bring it over, display the information on our screen, and then you're able to go forward with processing the transaction. Over on the left side here, you'll see all the order header information display. Starting at the top, you have the company that you're connected to. If you have different data sets or different companies within your Macola setup, we can toggle back and forth between those. Uh, the order that you've selected, 
Transportation information, that's pulled from the ship via code. We do value translations on the carrier and service level. Uh, billing information as well. So if you have collect or third-party accounts, McCullough has uh, multiple extra uh, fields in the customer maintenance area where you can repurpose those. We could pull it from the ship via code, any of those extra fields, user-defined fields, comments. Um, and if it's something other than you know prepaid, you can have it billed to a recipient or third-party accounts. We can map that value over as well. Transit time will show up here, let you know when you can anticipate the product would be delivered by. Below that, you have the sender information. That's the return address that's going to be used on the shipment. You can trigger that through the integration. The operator could also select here. Each one of these return addresses has a unique ID. So if you map that one field, that can trigger all of the uh, shipping information here, as well as the accounts. You can have multiple accounts set up with each of your carriers. So if you need to keep those charges assigned to separate buckets, all of that can be automated. Ship to address is the recipient over here. And you'll see a green checkbox next to the uh, ship to address that lets the operator know that we validated the address. That's a standard feature across the board with all of your various carriers and Starship. Um, we'll look at the city, state, and zip. We can add the zip plus four postal formatting if you choose that as a preference. The street address, the suite, the apartment number, and probably most importantly, the zone. So we'll flag that if it's a residential address, if it's a rural area any of the delivery area surcharges that the carriers will assess on top of the basic freight. We're gonna capture that as soon as it comes over from Ecola, so you know that you're dealing with a clean address and we're going to account for any of the extra charges that will be added on top of your freight bill. So once you've got everything into Starship, uh, at this point, you're going to assemble the shipment. I'm starting out uh, my packaging here on my most common box, you can set up a default container for Starship to uh, insert as your first package. Uh, those containers can also store the length, width, and height. Uh, so you can have that kind of automated. You can also build relationships between products and uh, the quantity of items that go into a particular container and have Starship auto pack those for you. Here we've got a couple of items that are uh, nested into our first box here. We can break that out if we choose. We can add packages a couple of ways. Click on the arrow here, and that will add a container. There's also the repeat function. This is useful if you have multiple pieces that you want to add all at once versus going one at a time. There's also a function to copy the weight. So let's say you have 10 case packs. You could just weigh the first box and then tell Starship to add nine boxes of identical size and weight. Over to the right, you have the add package, delete package icons here. Once we have the second box added, we can also take product and put that into a container. And through the EDI setup, we can also force the user to pack items. So if you have the type of trading partner that requires a pick pack ASN, we can uh, force the user to go through and pack out those items as you go through the shipping process. Once everything's packed up here, all my functions are up here in the toolbar, or there are keyboard shortcuts for all of my common program functions. And that's useful if you want to automate the process a little bit further. These keystrokes here could be barcoded, so you could have a barcode that emulates saving or printing. Instead of having to come up here with the keyboard and the mouse, you just simply scan a barcode for the F5, and that will process your transaction, print out your documents. Uh, there's a draft mode here as well. Uh, Control S will save it as a draft. Maybe you want to stage some orders, uh, get them ready to be shipped out, label some product, and set it aside and come back to it. Uh, so if you have multiple people picking orders, uh, that's a good way to start assembling the shipment and then uh, you know, regroup and come back to it whenever you're ready to finish it up. If you know that you're processing something for a particular date in the future, you can start working on your future orders and assign them to uh, the calendar here. So it'll show up on that day's manifest. Uh, your order reference fields are going to come through over here. Those are available to print on any of your documents, uh, your labels. So, you know, most commonly the order number, PO number, those can also be uploaded into the tracking system. Uh, so you have a way to cross-reference that information when you're going onto the carrier's website. Uh, department database you can set up. So if you need to assign that to a particular department or cost center. Uh, instructions fields here typically mapped over from the comments. You can also freeform type into that field. 
probably the most commonly used on the bill of lading. Uh, there's user-defined fields all over the place. Uh, so you have an unlimited number of user-defined fields. You can continue to grow the database over time. So you can set up each of these with a specific name if you want to designate that for a specific purpose. You have those at the shipment level, package and pallet level, items and order level. We can change the carrier and service level here. So we can switch between carriers and services on the fly, or we can also rate shop, click on the dollar sign there. That's gonna call out to all the various carriers that I have rates for, and then give me a list of examples that I can then choose from. Uh, there's also the browser-based rate quote utility. You'll get that with the license, and this is more of the front office tool where you can do some rating ahead of it going out to the shipping area if you want to give the customer an estimate on what the freight charges would be. And that works in both freight and parcel mode. I can see here uh, FedEx came out on top. And there's a little bit of a breakdown of what makes up those charges here. You can see, you know, because we flagged it as a uh, residential address, they're adding the surcharge in here, the fuel. So you have a little bit of granularity as to what makes up the charge. And then here's our total cost. That can either be based on a list price or your negotiated contract price. So your rates are available in the system at all times. Now let's say we put that into a larger box. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this from a box that has no dimensions associated to it. And we're gonna put that into one of our larger containers. And here's where you'll see the uh, benefit of uh, having the dimensional weight calculations. Uh, Starship will associate the charges to whichever the higher of the two rates are. So the contents, they weigh a total of 17 pounds. We're pulling that from the item master, or you can put the product on scale and it'll weigh it in real time. Starship also has integration to CubaScan scales where we can read the uh, length, width, and height from a scanner. It can scan the exterior dimensions of your container in real time and then compare that to the actual weight. Uh, so here, based on the size of the box and the actual weight, the size is going to bill this at 52 pounds, even though we only have 17 pounds of material inside that box. So we're going to come back over here and rate shop that again. I'll clear that out and let's see if uh, that makes any difference in terms of the charges. You can see in this example here, based on the size of the box, the post office actually came out ahead. Uh, so that's going to get it there in the same amount of time. And we can save, you know, approximately $4 by shipping it with the post office. So just some options. Um, we're doing that here on the fly. Uh, you can also set up Starship where it requires the dimensions for um, your shipments to be processed. We can have that as a fail safe for all of your various carriers. There's settings on each of the carriers here to require those packages dimensions in order to make sure that you're not processing shipments and leaving money on the table. Um, you can also automate this rate selection and service selection with ship via rules. Starship has a robust set of tools here available to automate that process for you. So we can disable certain services, we can have rules that automatically switch the carrier based on certain scenarios, a weight threshold, a certain zone, certain customer. Um, and then you can also set up the rate shopping scenarios where it picks the best carrier for you based on the speed, the price, the size, whatever those factors may be. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick the cheapest carrier here because we know it's gonna get it there in the same amount of time. And that'll put another four bucks in our pocket. We can apply any additional handling on top of the, those rates here. So we come back over here and we can see ultimately what's going to be written back into McCola. Um, our cost here is $42.60, but with the markup, we can invoice the customer here for $48.99. You can also see some granularity over here as to what rules were applied to the shipments. So we'll go ahead and process the shipment now. F5 ship and process will complete our transaction, print out our documents, and then we're gonna feed all that data back into McCola. 
here you'll see a preview of one of our different types of documents that we can produce. In this example, we have both the shipping label and the packing list together. There's uh, multiple formats of these that can be produced and all of those can be customized as well with branding, logos, reference fields, barcodes, whatever additional information you wanna add to the documents. Once that process is through, we'll go ahead and take a look back in McCullough at the results. So Starship's going to put the additional data in, into McCola in two places, uh, same as Shipgear, into the order header or the line comments. We have some basic information that we give you out of the box. Um, it's gonna put a header and a footer around our notes, so it's not gonna wipe out anything that you may already have stored in the notes. Uh, basically telling you when it went out, when it's going to get there, the carrier and service level that were selected, the billing preference, number of pieces and weights, and then a little bit of a breakdown on the contents of each of the packages with the related tracking information. So again, that can be customized with as much or as little detail as you're looking for. Each of the tags next to each field can be customized. Uh, the sequence and any data from Starship that you want to capture can be sent there. Uh, Starship also has a SQL extension, which opens up the option for us to take individual strings of data take that information and plug it into whatever tables and fields you'd like to see. Uh, so if you have other related tables that you've created in McCullough, we can certainly update that stuff there or send things into extra fields wherever you need to see that information. Uh, billing, we'll take the freight and we will either assign it here uh, as a freight charge onto the order itself and that'll carry through onto the invoice or we can also plug the information into the manifest table. This is another table that you can uh, then uh, capture cost and tracking information. And as you go through and do your select for billing, you have the ability to override the order freight with the amount that's on the manifest. So that's a way that you can kind of automate the invoicing process by batch selecting orders and pulling the manifest uh, freight amount onto the, uh, the order as you go ahead and turn that from an order into an invoice. Some people will also use this uh, field here to capture their cost, and then they'll write the actual freight that they're going to invoice back to the order freight. So you've got a couple of options there. So that's your basic uh, overview of Starship and the workflow. Uh, I'm gonna touch upon a couple of other extra areas that you get with Starship. Uh, we took a look at the rate quote utility uh, the email notification, that also is another area here where you can uh, kind of help automate the process of notifying your customers if you're proactively contacting them with the tracking, uh, with, the, with the freight information. Um, they can, you know, serve themselves by clicking on the link and get the status on that themselves. Hopefully that cuts down on the number of inbound calls that you're receiving. Uh, of course, the information lives over in McCola as well. Uh, one nice thing that you can do here with Starship is have attachments. So you can have a standard attachment, a catalog, a, a warranty, piece of literature, something like that that you want to send as a standard attachment, or you can pull any of the shipping documents out of Starship. So any of those documents uh, can be uh, PDF'd and stored in the database as well as an external folder out on the network, and they can be sent as attachments. So you can set up all of your email templates here based on the audience, what type of information you want to send them, and uh, go ahead and pull those records right out of Starship. Uh, there's also the ability here to set up the send schedule so you can have those done in real time. So as you're processing throughout the day, the emails are going out. Uh, it could be synced to a certain process like your end of day or a certain time of day, or they can be done manually where you can queue them up and then someone's tasked with going in and releasing that batch of emails. Again, hopefully that's going to cut down on the number of calls that you're receiving as to the status. We're going to put that detail back into McCullough, uh, but you'll also have it available to the front office here in the dashboard. Uh, dashboard is where you can have some visibility to the activity. Uh, there's uh, some predefined sorts here built in based on the status, the carrier, location, mode of transport, each of your users, so you can track each individual user's activity on the system and your top five customers. 
Uh, you can also look into the history here using any of the ERP data that we're grabbing from Macola. Any of those common fields like, like the order invoice number, PO number, customer ID, address fields, any of those can be used to do lookups on the Starship history. Once you find the transaction that you're looking for, a copy of the email will be here. You'll be able to track that. Uh, all the order header information will be here as well. And then you'll have a breakdown here of the package tracking information, the products and quantities that were shipped, details on the charges, how those were arrived at, and then any special services, so residential, insurance, COD, liftgate, any of those common um, additional fees, you'll see those broken out here. All right, we will just go through another quick example. We're coming up against the half hour here, and I'll go ahead and show you the freight process. Very similar to what you're doing with parcels, you just simply enter in an order that you want to ship. And based on the ship via code, we'll do value translations on that, bring over the appropriate uh, common carrier. You'll see down below here in the packaging that things are packed up uh, in two ways. You have items in boxes, and then those boxes go on pallets. From here, you can then add a pallet, add a package as needed. You can also do aggregate packaging. If you don't need to see the exact breakdown of items and boxes, you can just put in the total quantity of boxes or pallets here. Once you've got that all assembled, click on the dollar sign there. That's going to call out to all the various freight carriers that you have access to on Starship. Uh, UPS and FedEx, you also get the UPS freight, FedEx freight services with that. And it's going to give you another list here of all the various carriers, uh, ranking them from the cheapest down to the most expensive. And you'll see those here color coded in a couple of ways. My uh, purple or pink carriers here are my direct contracts. Uh, blue rates here are from 3PL Freight Quote. You have that option of seeing some other carriers rates in here from a uh, uh, third party logistics company. We're just gonna go ahead and Award the business to RNL. They're coming up the cheapest, and it'll get it there in the same amount of time. So we'll switch that here on the fly. Um, you can also um, do the tendering here, so you can have shipments uh, scheduled for a future date or a particular time during the day. So let's say we're going to build this for tomorrow, and our dock is available at noon, and we close at six. So that'll be factored into the pickup request when we're sending this to the carrier. Tendering can be set as a preference by carrier, or you can change it here on the fly. So electronic will hit the carrier's API, book the truck if they have the capacity, dispatch the truck, and then send back the pro number and the documents and labels to Starship. Uh, if you have a regular pickup, you can set that up. If you have a truck that comes by, you don't need to notify them to have it dispatched. Call for pickup would be more like a customer routed freight or 3PL type shipment uh, where you need to uh, contact a broker or the carrier directly, maybe a local or regional carrier. We'll go ahead and do this electronically though. Again, all of your accessorials are exposed here. So if you have customers that require white glove service and inside delivery, you know, those types of properties about the address, uh, we can pick that up from the order header or from the customer maintenance screen in, in Macola. Process this here. If everything goes through, doesn't like our item information. Fantastic. So one thing that Starship will do is keep track of item properties. So one thing we didn't really touch on. Um, so for the bill of lading, um, we have different categories. You can have NMFC codes, freight classes assigned to each of your products. process that here. And take a look at examples of our bill of lading. Uh, Starship can give you both a VIX and a straight bill of lading. These can all be modified with custom formatting changes. Uh, so these are built in here as well as export documentation. Here's our straight and our VIX. 
Uh, you also have the carrier formats as well. So you can get those directly from the carriers. Uh, in some cases, they will also email you copies of those. All right, that wraps up our topics for today's demo. We can open it up to any questions at this point. Well, thank you, Chris. And um, so again, if you do have questions, uh, please um, you know, uh, raise your hand, jot the question in the question pane, and we'll try to address any questions that do come up. Um, let me get to those questions as we speak here. <clears throat> All right, first question we do have coming in, does Starship offer monthly payments like ship gear? And side question to that, what does the typical Starship implementation timetable look like? Okay, so Starship is a little bit different than ship gear. Uh, there's no uh, tiered pricing based on volume. It's a perpetual license, so there's an upfront cost to um, license the software. It's based on the number of users and the combination of carriers that you're using. Um, and then the maintenance is calculated at 17% uh, of the retail price of the software. Uh, so you have an annual maintenance fee versus a month to month fee. No restrictions on the number of transactions. Uh, typical Great. implementation, um, we're booked usually one to two weeks out on our service calendar. Um, that does get busier around the end of the year um, with people upgrading for uh, the changes that come uh, typically right around the first of the year. Um, but uh, right now, you know, we can usually get you on the schedule inside of two weeks. Uh, the time frame for delivery will depend on the mix of carriers, the number of users and sites, any of those other third party applications that you may have in the mix like EDI, warehouse management, e-commerce. Uh, so all of that uh, will affect the total number of hours, but a typical implementation, a few carriers, a few users, usually delivered over uh, about uh, three days uh, in, in different phases. Right, great, thank you. Um, next question, does this work with progression? Uh, we do work with progression. We're backwards compatible to version 7.5.3. Uh, D, I believe. So anything uh, progression from 1999 or higher up to the most recent release is compatible. We also support ES and uh, Macola 10. There's also an interface available for the Macola WMS uh, application as well. Okay, great. Um, I know we're a little over time, so I'm going to leave it open for a couple more minutes for some additional questions. Um, I do have two others here that I do want to get to. Um, we use Crystal Reports in-house. Can I access the Starship tables? Uh, yes, we have uh, SQL views, which are published. Um, Starship actually does use Crystal in our dashboard, uh, so we can give you um, a document that has all of the views and what the related fields are for you know, easily doing the joins to get at the data that you're looking for. Um, we also have the ability to export information to a flat file uh, so we can you know, get it to you in multiple formats. Uh, but yeah, you can query the uh, Starship tables directly through Crystal or any other type of reporting platform. Great. And then uh, one other question here, um, any type of e-commerce integrations available? Yes, uh, we currently have about seven different e-commerce integrations with uh, just about as many in the pipeline. Uh, we currently have eBay, um, Amazon, Etsy for marketplaces. Uh, there's uh, work planned for Walmart, um, and I'm sorry, the list is escaping me for marketplaces. Um, shopping carts, we have Shopify, WooCommerce, um, Big Commerce, 3D carts, um, 
Volusion, and there's quite a few other ones that are in the pipeline. So uh, if you need more information on our e-commerce options, feel free to reach out to me and we'll go ahead and set you up with whatever information you need on that. I'll go ahead and pop up my contact here. Okay, well, thank Thanks. you, Chris. And I think that's all questions for now. And I do appreciate everyone jumping on this afternoon um, to learn a little bit more about the Starship application and how it can integrate with McCullough. Uh, so hopefully you learned a little something you may not have known. Um, but the copy of this recording will go out to everyone who has registered and attended, so you can feel free to watch it at your leisure. And if you do have any questions, please reach out to Chris, um, and Chris will reach out to those who are interested as well in learning more about Starship and how it can help uh, streamline your operation further. So again, once again, thank you everyone. Thanks, Chris, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.